we talk of sound, sound is a big word, like the word Shabd, Nard, Pali, Naam. Use these words. Every scripture I have gone through places it. Whether it is the Quran, talking of the Bhagya Asmani, sound coming from the sky, or it's the Bible, who says in the beginning was the word, or it's the Vedas. The Rig Veda which says God created everything. Or in the Guru Granth Sahib, the holy book of the Sikh community, which says everything was created by Shabd. One of the Shabd says Shabd e Dharti, Shabd e Akash, and goes on describing how Shabd created everything. At the end, it says Shabd e Shabd wa Akash. Even Shabd was created by Shabd as the power. Of something audible, so wonderful, something that we can hear as physical human beings connects us continuously to the ultimate creative power. Nothing else connects us. These visions we have of a physical world they disappear when we go to an astral world. The visions of astral world completely disappear. When we go to the causal world, everything disappears. When we go to the spiritual world, sound does not disappear. It's the link between every one of our experiences, no matter what and where. Where is it coming from? Where does a sound that is creative power for everything come from? It comes from our true home. Such can't. True home, our ultimate destination, totality of consciousness. You can use any number of words; it won't describe it. It's difficult for us to understand that the totality of consciousness is not separate from us. If it were, it is not totality. The moment we say totality of consciousness, we are not excluding anything, including one of us. Therefore. Our realization of our true home is not somewhere else. It's not a different place. It's all the places which, right now, we divide into levels of consciousness, levels of realities, levels of worlds created. All of them are part of totality. Now, imagine an experience that you can have. Yet all these worlds can be experienced at the same time by being in totality, because all occurring in totality. We have covered our eyes to some of this part of the totality and made it partial. And as we cover our eyes more, we get more and more drawn to different levels of experiences. Totality is everything. Imagine a perfect living master is one. Who is living with the continuous awareness of all these levels, and he promises you can have the same. It's not a small promise. He is not saying, "I'll give you something higher. I'll give you something better." Lot of people can do that. He says, "I'll give you total. I'll give you something that all experiences are part of it." You can hold that awareness. It's so limited right now. You can expand it to where you are constantly aware of all levels of creation. Like you are watching. If I give a physical example, there is a big garden with different sections of different flowers. If you go from one section, these are rose garden, these are pansies garden, this is garden of another flower, these are yellow flower, the blue flower. And we go and we look at those flowers. We say these are blue flowers. Rose garden is somewhere else. We go to rose garden. That other flower is somewhere else. We travel because we separated them. And then you fly on a tower or go high and see the whole garden. You see all of them at once. This is exactly the same situation. 
we have spread out our awareness into pieces which we call levels of consciousness, which we call different ways of experiencing time space and non-time space. But imagine that it is possible for a human being to experience the whole of it together. Not a small thing. All questions are answered in complete detail if you watch the creation of the universe together. Then you'll also find something very interesting which is very difficult for the mind to absorb. But I want to say it anyway that the creator and the creation are the same. It's very difficult. We separate the creator. But if there's nothing separate, how can it be separate? In totality of consciousness, the creator and the creation are the same. We separate in consciousness, in awareness, to make it a separately created world. But the experience is possible of even the unification of the power that creates and permeates all over. People say God is everywhere. How do they say that? God is everywhere because that is God. It's the creative power that is expressing itself in experiences. Therefore, there's really no difference. But we made it all the difference here. We live in a world of division, separation, partial experiences, small experiences, so far removed from our own reality of being total. We are total. Within totality, we have created created a partial division and we are experiencing it here. We experience at all levels of consciousness. It's just partial. And many masters come who can take you to a higher level. So-called higher level. Perfect little masters are few. They take you to totality of consciousness. The same that they are identical. They become identical. They don't say, okay, I'll show you what I have. You are the same. There's only one. In totality, there's nothing outside of it. The whole show of creation is taking place within totality. The whole of creation is within the creator. But these are difficult for the mind to understand, but I'm still saying it. So that some part of us, which is not mind, is still absorbing us. We can know there is something higher than what we can think about. It's beyond the mind. Mind is very limited. It's only after we go beyond the mind, we realize the limitation of the mind. Mind is very, very limited. It works under very close, very small rules. Rules of here and there. Rules of now and then. Rules of time, which the mind cannot escape from no matter how hard it tries. Every thought takes time. All concepts which are born in the causal plane. All ideas which are born in the astral plane. All manifestations here are all very small, small section of totality. That is why I just want to tell you what a great opportunity it is. What a great opportunity for a human seeker to be able to seek that and find it while you are still human beings. Having said that, I also want to say it's not difficult. It's not only simple, it's not difficult. But mind won't accept it. If a perfect living master with that consciousness says, I accept you, you got it. Period. Couldn't it be easier than how can you make it easier than that? How can you make this truth easier than that, that a human being like ourselves, no difference except the awareness, except the consciousness of that human being, which is total at the time. If he says, I accept you, you're part of me, you're part of the truth. Rest is only that you can continue to have a little experience in a form in which you exist. This statement is being made by a human being to a human being. 
both are living in a different state than totality. Both are living in a partial state. Human being, master is a human being when he says that. The disciple is a human being when he receives that. But the promise is not being made by a human being. Neither is it is being made to the human being who is called a disciple. The promise is being made to the soul, the unit of consciousness, which is generating this experience. And the promise is you will be total. Because one human being is telling another, we are total, I will create your awareness to the same totality and we will no longer, no longer be different. We sometimes say it's merger. Merger is not a good word. I don't like it. When people say you merge in something, I say I'm losing something. This is not merger. This is realization of our own reality. Realizing your own reality is not a merger with anything. You were that into which you are merging. How can you call it merger? If you realize who you were, do you call it merger? So that is why it's a very deep thing. But I wanted to share with you because the promise of a perfect living master is not easily understood. When that human being with that awareness says, I accept you, it's a done deal. It cannot be changed. It has never been changed. No matter what the time situation is, what the place is, where it happens, it's a indelible promise. It cannot be written out. It cannot be erased. That is why I say such a simple thing that you are seeking and you meet a perfect human master he says accept you. The greatest thing that can happen to human soul. Not human body. Human soul. The human soul is suffering in a created universe. In created universes and identifying with something it is not. The soul does not suffer if it does not misidentify. If the soul knows I am soul, no problem. When the soul says, I am thinking, it's no longer soul. When the soul says, I am speaking, no longer soul. When the soul says, I am eating, no longer soul. When we identify ourselves, with a machine given to us like a mind or a mind that is given to perceive created reality and then the mind divides it into sense perceptions and we say, I can see, I can hear, you are no longer the soul. You identified yourself with something that is covering you. This misidentification, first with the body, then with sense perceptions, then with the thinking mind, is creating all the problems and suffering for the mind, for the soul. Soul came for an experience, is having the experience, but when it identifies with these, it gets into trouble. And the soul is not so stupid. Soul is very intelligent. Though the word intelligence doesn't apply to soul with full knowledge, it applies to the mind. But I'm using it for the soul, just to explain something, that the soul has already made arrangement to escape from this prison that it creates for itself for the sake of an independent reality, independent experience. This is the arrangement made when it is tired of this experience, seeks to go home, perfect living master appears. Good arrangement. It works. I came here to share with you some of these things. These are based upon the teachings and practice of this great master. I take no credit for it. If he had not been in my life, I couldn't have uttered a single word about any other subject. In fact, I am like a parrot in that way, as I am repeating something he used to say and explain. What pulled me, in spite of my doubting, skeptic mind, what eventually pulled me so much to this man 
lot of age difference difference in how we were even living what would be what is unconditional love i don't think we need to look any further than the experience of unconditional love to know we have come to the right place of course sometimes our mind likes to check if it is unconditional or not <laughs> check it out no harm take time we have waited for millions of years taking a little more time means nothing even taking a couple of lifetimes means nothing compared to total time check it out how by associating with the perfect living mass and see does his love ever change just because of your situation is never does he judge you if you have been good or bad never a man came to great monster i was there like 20 other people sitting around him he was sitting in a chair he was sitting on the floor the man comes running master forgive me you asked me to be vegetarian and not eat meat you asked me not to drink alcohol you asked me to have a good moral life i did everything wrong last night <laughs> i was a bad company i drank like fish i ate all kinds of meat steaks whatever was served and we womanized it was a terrible evening please forgive me we were all there including masters special secretaries who were sitting next to him and master said okay you're forgiven don't do it again he said thank you thank you master and ran away the secretaries were surprised and one of them asked the master master he did everything wrong instead of punishing him you just forgave him supposing he does the same things again and comes to you will you forgive him again of course i will forgive him master when will you punish him for what he is doing he said his own mind is punishing him when he came to me did you see his own mind was punishing him more than anybody could punish him society is punishing him people who are other satsangis like you people are punishing him let me be a forgiver don't put me into the punishers that is what perfect living masters are always forgivers never punishers It's an amazing thing in a human being. We see a master as a human being, and he is a human being for us because we are human beings. And for a human being to exhibit this kind of compassion, this kind of love and forgiveness, very rare. But you see it in a perfect living master. These are amazing things. The more you associate, the more you discover these. So since I met him. several times i saw his relationship with people always loving only once i was very disturbed shall i tell you that also <laughs> he was going out for a walk and the people used to crowd around him so there was a line of people telling don't please stay on one side give him space to walk so the line of sevadar was there on both sides and he came out of his house and was walking and the sevadar were holding the other people back who wanted they were all standing like this a few people were allowed to walk with him and i was one of the fortunate ones to walk in behind him one old lady broke the cordon and came and touched his feet he took his stick and beat her in one instant i lost all faith in him i thought he was a kind loving person he's beaten an old lady 
What is her fault? She's trying to show her love and respect to him. He can't be a master. People walked and I left. I said, let me go and say some good comforting words to the lady. You will beat her up by the master with a stick. By the way, I have the same stick. <laughs> Just a little warning. <laughs> I went and saw the lady. A lot of people gathered around her. And she was looking so bright. I've never seen her. She was holding like this. What gift? In one second he removed my karma. In one second he gifted so much of my karma. She was so happy that something good has happened. I was trying to go and sympathize with her. And she was congratulating herself for what happened. So I went back and ran to join the master. To see how is he feeling? <laughs> this woman is feeling great. What about the master? So I went on the side to see you smiling away. I said, I I have this idea, Master's love, but I did not have an idea that he could convey his love with a stick. I could not understand, my mind could not understand that at a certain point, what was needed by that woman, she got. I wouldn't understand. Others couldn't understand. How masters deal with us is totally different from each person. It's customized. And that is why we have Never understood master's contradictory ways of dealing with different people. And we try to apply what they are saying to somebody else, to ourselves. No. You ask your own questions. Don't listen to anybody's gossip. Don't listen to anybody else's account. Now what happens? Say what I have, what I have seen, what I have experienced. Each person has their own experience. And they must rely on their own experience, not on hearsay, not on other people's stories. Whether they are good or bad, it doesn't matter. This path is not based upon a consensus over anything. This path is for each individual soul, which has been experiencing time and space for a long time and is held up here in a strange law of karma. Strange law that operates here in the three worlds and does not operate at all in the spiritual worlds. Just having come into that experience, when these human beings come, they deal differently. So do, don't go by anybody else's experience or opinion except your own, based on your own experience. Very important. But people go so much by hearsay. So and so said this. Okay, I don't know why that's what so said. Maybe that experience was different. That is why it's very important on this spiritual path to remember the relationship with the perfect living master is always one-on-one. -on -one. When we have a collective meeting like this, there are also many gathered together. Some people have one-on-one -on -one experience by meeting me separately or we used to say, go to great master, meet separately, he would give time. Then he would tell us something separate. But even when he spoke to a group of us, the group was generally small. Only on some occasions, the big Bandara of 29 December was a big one, the day on which his, his master passed away and he felt he was more alive, like I felt on 2nd of April in 1948 that he was more alive for me after that, when he bodily passed away. That's a different Bandhara celebration. But on most occasions, small groups of people, he would say a few things. Not everybody heard the same thing. People heard what they felt was for them. And in one group, he could spend a little time and give 20 messages to 20 different people. They picked up 
what they needed at that time. So even in a in a group, he could do that. Of course, people had some personal problems, and they made it personal because they didn't know who the others are. And he gave time personal also. These are great advantages of finding the ultimate power, the creative power in a human form with us. Big advantage. I hope you will all take advantage of these tips I'm giving you from experience. And I hope they will work for you. They have worked for me. I hope they'll work for you. I send you my best wishes and blessings. Great master blessings to all of you. <clears throat> I have also requested Jonathan that those who have asked for personal time with me and could not get it for a shortage of time, their names be sent to the next event which will be in September meditation workshop and we place their names ahead of others so they will definitely get time. If you are not coming there, then their names will be placed in the next event that takes place wherever it is or in the Bandara when we have separate days set up for these personal meetings, you will be able to see me. So thank you very much. You have a very nice audience. Thank you so much.